Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. And today's video is all about five tips on how to shoot your best iPhone photos ever. This also applies to other phones as well. However, there is one tip that is unique to iPhones. We are in Banff National Park right now. And today we're doing a video, five tips to make your iPhone photography much better. And today we're with this, <laughs> this. <laughs> this. <laughs> and today I'm with Lisa. I haven't seen Lisa in like 16 years. Is that right? <laughs> we went to high school together and sure enough, she was out in Banff. She's like, hey, let's go hiking. Let's do something. And I'm like, well, why not? And hey, do you want to be in a video? And decided, yes, I'll help you with the video. So here we are doing five tips to make your phone photography better. Let's get into the video. Tip number one, and it's most basic yet important. And it's not really a tip. It's more like the fundamentals, the elements and principles of photography. In short, photography is light. Photographers are always chasing light and talking about light, where it's going, what it's doing, etc., etc. The best lighting, of course, is at sunrise and sunset. It's the softest for portraits and it has the best colors and shadows for landscapes. Always keep the light in mind and see how it affects your image. Another principle, and it's probably the oldest one in the books, and that is the rule of thirds. This rule is all about balancing the elements of the photo into thirds and placing your interest or subject where the lines intersect. However, the moment this rule is understood, then it can be broken. For example, on a vertical photograph, placing the subject in the center of the photograph is still very aesthetic. Next, look for leading lines. These can both be natural or unnatural. They can guide your eyes to the subject or to the interest in the photograph. Balancing your photograph through lines of symmetry is another great element of photography. A great way to achieve this look is by using reflections off of water or windows or reflective surfaces. Try your best to isolate the subject on a smooth background so they don't get lost in the photograph. For example, look at this photo from Mirror Lake in Banff and you'll see that the subject is on a smooth background, not getting lost in the photograph. You're just going to bend down and then stand up abruptly to get those ripples, okay? Here we go. Yeah, there they are. Awesome. Sweet. There are more elements of photography. However, these are some of the most important ones. So keep them in mind when you're framing your photographs and you will be taking some excellent images that you'll be proud of. Tip number two, and that is action photography. For this type of photography, we wanna be catching fast moving subjects by using the burst mode on our phone. So all we need to do is press and hold the button on the camera app and it shoots 10 photos per second. That was 15. Right now you can see the water is super, super calm. Great reflection, you can see right through the water. I'm just gonna do a dive right in and we're gonna click and hold the camera phone and it's gonna get the burst shots. <laughs> Tip number three, use accessories. Here I am using the fisheye lens from Sandmark in two different scenarios. In the first situation, Lisa cannot get any further away from me without standing in the water, so she uses extra width that the fisheye provides. Also, she's trying to isolate me in the sky so I don't get lost in the background. This means she needs to get low, close, and shoot upward at the subject, being me. The fisheye allows her to capture all of the subject in the frame and not cut off any limbs. In the second scenario, we're at a waterfall and there's almost no room for the photographer to stand and get the waterfall and the subject in the shot. So again, the fisheye lens came in handy here. All right, it's a little noisy right now, but we are in a super tight space, which requires the fisheye lens for the iPhone. There's no other option. As you can look around here, we only have that spot to stand on and a really, really tight. So luckily, like this side, it's a steep drop. So luckily we have the, the lens to put on and then we can grab the whole scenario. So another amazing thing about this lens is it makes for some great vertical videos or, or Insta stories to get all your surroundings. Lake Louise, Mirror Lake, you can kind of get everything in the shot. Whoa. 
So that's the view. Tip number four, and I love this tip. This was actually released in iOS 11. However, still so many people don't know about it. It's long exposure iPhone photography. This is the tip that is unique to only to iPhones because iPhones have live photos. So a process that was tedious and took a long time is now something so simple. All you need to do is take a live photo, then swipe up on the photo and select long exposure. Voila, it's just that easy. Okay, a DSLR is still much better than this. However, this is a phone tutorial after all, and it's quick and easy. All right, that brings us to our final tip, number five. Ensure you touch up your photos on the most powerful editing software on the market, and that is Adobe Lightroom Mobile. Begin your edits by cropping and straightening your photo. 4x5 if you wanna to export to Instagram, or 9x16 if you want a new wallpaper or even Instagram stories. First, adjust the exposure, then bring down the highlights and lift the shadows to recover the most details in your shot. Next up, adjust your colors so you can warm up or cool down a photo by adjusting the temperature or the white balance. By raising the vibrance, you can boost all the colors in the photos without affecting the skin tones. Such a powerful and great tool. Next, we can get into a lot more powerful techniques by selecting that mix button. We can adjust individual colors on the HSL sliders, hue, saturation, and luminance. Next, you can adjust the details of the photos by adjusting the texture, clarity, and dehaze tools. These tools contrast the mid-tones in the photos and typically bring out more detail in your shots. However, sliding the clarity and texture to the left gives you that more dreamy and glowy type feel. If you're interested in learning in depth the HSL slider, tone curve, camera calibrations, then you could consider purchasing my presets. The link is in the description. I'll show you now some of the before and afters of the presets that I use just with one single click. All of these presets are great for mobile and you can learn how I got those looks by going through all of my settings and figure out the sliders that I use to get the looks. All right, that wraps it up for this video. I hope it helped. If it did, be sure to check out my other camera tutorials and editing tutorials here on YouTube, because I've got a lot of them. And if you don't mind, give this video a like and a comment. Consider subscribing if you aren't already, and we'll catch you in the next one.